Welcome to the Learn to Trade with Black Bull Markets podcast. I'm your host, Mark O'Donnell, and joining me again is Eric Walkington, a Senior Account Manager here at Black Bull Markets. In this episode, we're going to be discussing everything Fibonacci. Welcome, Eric. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me again, Mark. Maybe you can start us off by letting our listeners know what Fibonacci numbers are. Of course. Um, so essentially, Fibonacci's or Fibonacci sequence uh, is a series of numbers um, where each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. Um, this is also famously coined by um, Leonardo da Vinci. So this is where this is kind of, it's quite got a bit of history behind it as well. Now, some of the sequences, generally the first few numbers go zero and then one and one and then one plus one equals two. 1 plus 2 equals 3, and then goes 5, 8, 13, 21, so forth, all the way up to an infinite number of numbers. Sure. Um, trading Fibonacci numbers are a little bit different. Um, so what they do is that they're essentially derived from dividing um, two Fibonacci numbers together. So a common one is the 38.2% level. Now that's derived from dividing 21, which is the eighth sequence, uh, by 55, which is the tenth sequence, so you essentially get 38.18, which is then rounded to 38.2%, which is one of the very common ones traders use today. And what are the other Fibonacci numbers that traders will be interested in? So when it comes to Fibonacci retracement, which is where a lot of traders will look at um, using them for after uh, big moves in the markets or potential support and resistance levels, um, you're going to be using uh, trading ranges generally 38.2%, 50%, and then 61.8%. And so that sounds like FIBs could also be used to set profit targets and stop losses levels? Yeah, traders will use these ratios to uh, look at potential uh, entries and exits, uh, potential retracement levels to get into a position. Um, so if something's kind of trending or making a big impulse upwards, um, you'll generally notice a common trend that a reversal will happen. What they'd like to do is see where that reversal will stop and maybe catch it going back up. So that's where they'll use somewhere between the 50 and 61.8% retracement levels. Okay. And what is the theory behind using Fibonacci numbers uh, when using to identify entry and exit points? Um, essentially, with Fibonacci numbers, it's basically a technical analysis tool based on the idea that financial markets move in waves. Um, these can be predicted through financial, uh, sorry, Fibonacci ratios. Now, financial markets, if, if you've traded for a while, you know they don't move in a straight line. So this is where the Fibonaccis will help you kind of catch that ebb and flow. So, for example, uh, if a financial asset is in an uptrend, a trader may use one of the Fibonacci ratios um, that, that they are likely to believe where there'll be a potential level for support um, and there's potential bounce off and continue an upward movement. So a trader may enter a long position at this level um, with stop losses kind of further below. And that happens in the other way as well. So if, if you're looking at a short, then you'll look at where it's going to be up for another potential sell or a lower breakdown. So because it's based on this idea that the market moves in waves, is it fair to say that Fibonacci levels are related to the psychology of traders too? Yeah, very much so. Um, Fibonacci ratios definitely kind of lean into the psychology of traders. Um, they're not magical levels in any way, shape or form. Some assets they work really well with, other assets they don't. Um, and historically speaking, you do see that they work better in certain market cycles as well. Um, but they can be self-fulfilling prophecies as well. So if a trader, uh, sorry, as traders on mass buy and sell and move the markets and kind of generate a lot of momentum, um, the belief that these will provide su supports and resistance levels may kind of change the psychology of the trader as well. Now that we've covered the background and concept of the Fibonacci, I want to talk more about the practical application that you just touched on too. So the first thing I wanted to ask was how do traders apply the Fibonacci levels to a chart? So Fibonacci's, uh, you can use a Fibonacci extension or a Fibonacci retracement depending on what you're going to do. Um, it's typically drawn by selecting two points. So one represents the high and one represents the low of a price movement. Could be hourly, daily, whichever, whichever uh, time zone, time frame you're using. Um, and then that'll automatically set the bands and lines. And 
with our platforms that we have, you can always add more or take off certain levels you don't want to see there as well. One thing I would like to note is that because this is basically an attachment from a price point to another price point, a lot of the time it's definitely more prudent to look at the wick of the candle rather than the body because it represents the true high or the true low point of the price movement, not necessarily where the candle finishes in a specific time frame. So different traders have different preferences on how they attach the Fibonacci retracement levels to their charts. Um, some may choose to use the body and others may use the candlestick wick instead. Right. And I just want to go back one second and ask what the difference is between an extension and a retracement Fibonacci. So a Fibonacci retrent, uh, retracement is essentially after a big massive move, um, you'll take the, the low and the high and you'll see the pullback. So the pullback will be uh, 38.2 and then you're going to be looking at the 50% and then 61.8%. Now with a big move like it's just happened previously with gold, for example, um, I would look at maybe looking at the four hourly chart, um, looking for a retracement level. And based on my trading experience, I would make an educated guess on where it would likely find support or resistance. And then I would look at possible confirmations through previous technical analysis tools that I've used to maximize the potential for a good entry and not overexposing myself for no reason. So you would use Fibonacci on gold. Is there any other assets that you would use the Fibonacci with or even conversely that you'd avoid using it with? Yeah, historically speaking, um, they can be used for most assets and currencies. Now, whether they actually work will depend on certain things such as the cycle of the market, whether it's an arranging range bound market, whether it's a breakout market. Um, Assets and commodities do vary depending on um, what they're used for. So for example, gold is a very good one because it's it tends to work, historically speaking, very well with Fibonacci. So does oil um, and certainly some of the Japanese, can, uh, Japanese yen pairs do work as well. Personally, I like to use it for gold. Um, I find it very an effective tool. I don't personally trade oil, but I've seen a lot of traders use it as well. Could you speak more about the different time frames as well? Yeah, of course. So Fibonacci levels may be more relevant for long term charts, uh, four hourly, daily, weekly to look at macro trend cycles. Um, the shorter charts, the shorter time frames, because there's so much potential movement, um, breakouts could be overextended or pullbacks could be um, a little bit further than expected. So you want to trade you want to trade with Fibonacci's based on your experience and definitely a bit of back testing as well. Um, your risk tro tolerance and your trading st strategy is also going to be very important. So a, tech, a purely technical trader will trade Fibs a lot more than say a fundamental trader, but they will still both look at the key index, the key levels, the 61.8, the 50, and the 38.2, because those are very big levels generally for the Fibonacci users. Let's end on that great note. Thanks for sharing your expertise, Eric. My pleasure, Mark. Thank you for listening to the Learn to Trade with Black Bull Markets podcast. We'll be back next week with a new trading topic, so be sure to subscribe in your favourite podcast player.